And good evening to you. It's Wednesday the... Is it the 11th? One minute. No. It's Wednesday the 13th of May 2015. Warm welcome along to our little late night show tonight, boys and girls. Also tonight on Periscope. If you're not with us on Periscope yet, you need to join us on there as well. It's Chris Reardon UK is the Periscope thing. If you're wondering what Periscope is, it's a new app that they come out on the Apple iPhone that we're making uh, a lot of use out of that now. Okay, so download the app and look for username Chris Reardon UK. Now, I'm very pleased to say I was very concerned. Good morning, Paul Edwards. Or good evening to Paul Edwards, who was with us today as well already. Uh, Jimmy Butler's there. And uh, I've, I've already made a mistake, I know that. Jimmy Butler's there, Gary Butler's there. We're all together. How lovely to be all together. SCTV is there as well on Periscope. Good uh, evening to you. Uh, hello to Terry H. He's with us. Terry H up in Leeds. Evening, Terry. And I'm very pleased to say Marge is with us. Now, I was concerned about Marge today. Now, Marge lives in the outback of Oklahoma. And they have power cuts and tornadoes. I mean, the way I present this show, you couldn't look at it as a tornado, couldn't you? All lively and bubbly and happy as I am, whizzing round like a tornado. Woo! Oh, woo! I can't quite get the chair. Woo! Woo! Yes, I am indeed the human tornado, boys and girls, the way I carry out this show. Anyway, today she had a power cut. Morning, Mike. A power cut. If you're wondering how I'm seeing these people come up, I'll explain in a minute. Um, uh, she had a power cut and was concerned, boys and girls. We were concerned that she would not be able to be with us today from Oklahoma, US of A. But however, the electricity has come back on. Yes, she's managed to find a dollar coin and put it in that little meter and on it burst into life her computers and things like that and all that business so i'm very pleased about that marge welcome i'm glad you're with us especially as i've got a couple of emails to read from you today my darling okay uh who else is with us today marge is going to call in a little bit later on probably shania on the isle of Wight. hello shania i'm glad you're awake but unfortunately if you're watching this particular show it won't last for long darling okay you know why that is People do watch this show if they're having a problem, you know, going to sleep. Now, who's someone's going to have a bath? Just a minute. Zuri is going to have to take a bath. Well, can you not take us in the bath with us, Zuri? It's only a one. I, I promise I won't look. Zuri, I promise you I will not look at you in the bath if you take us in there, OK? <laughs> Hello to Mark. Um, <laughs> I promise. I promise. I'm not looking, Zuri. Go on, go in the bath. Now, if you're wondering where these messages are coming from, then I know you're watching via YouTube. So I'm going to keep explaining this for a little while, you know. Uh, why have we got that Latvian soup question again? OK, so Periscope is a little app, right? And it's like your own mini TV station. And when you do a show, hello, Joey, right? When you do a show, everyone who's following you, OK, gets a little bleep and they... they Sorry, Paul. Sorry, is that better? Paul just pointed out that the union flag was tilting. Sorry about that, Paul. Thanks for pointing it out. Anyway, uh, so it's like your own little TV show and you do your shows on there. And while you're doing them, people send you messages. OK, and you can read them on the screen. They come up right at the bottom there. Um, and the message is, is in black. You know, it's quite easy to read. The names of the people, however, are in light grey and it's a lot smaller and it can be difficult. It's certainly like if I take my glasses off, I can't see them. It's just like a grey blur. So that's why I've got my glasses on. And I do try and keep an eye on the messages as we're carrying on. However, the messages only stay on there for about five seconds. So if you've got a lot coming through at the same time, sometimes you miss them. And if that happens, then I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry I missed them. And once you've missed them, there's no going back. Do you know what I mean? Once they're gone, they're gone. You can't double check afterwards to see what people were saying. So just to let you know that, all right? If, so that's that's when I'm saying hello to people. Terry Wood has just joined. Terry Wool has just joined us as well. Hello, Terry. Also, when people join us on on Periscope, their name comes up as well. I can see who's joining me. Uh, you can't see who's leaving you. All you see is the numbers drop down. And believe me, during my shows, the numbers often drop down a long way. 
Uh, we're also via Skype. People send messages via Skype as well. Uh, Paul uh, says, I'm looking very smart. And he was complaining about the union flag that was tilting at the back there. Uh, no problem. Thank you, Paul. I've sorted that out now. But what a, dis what a disappointment, Paul. You didn't, you didn't mention my beautiful new yellow plant behind me. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Why is the ball above your head constitutes the different aspects of the British flag that glare? Is that what's happening? Can you say, how can you notice something like that? I know it's there, but are you, are you looking for different things other than the things I'm talking about? <laughs> so these are like yellow trumpet shaped flowers. It's not plastic. I don't have any. I hate plastic plants. You will never, ever see plastic plants in my house. Awful, awful, awful things. I mean, the sort of people that have plastic plants in their house either appear or watch Big Brother, OK, or appear or are in or watch The Only Way is Essex. They are the sort of people that have pl plastic plants. Not here. Not here. Thank you very much. No plastic plants. Anyway, so this is a diamantina. I mean, it sounds foreign, doesn't it? It's a diamantina. OK. And it's really, really nice. And I found this uh, in one of my many visits uh, to the garden centre. I'm glad you like the cats as well. My cat at the top there. I've got a light up cat right at the top there. Um, you can't quite see that on the periscope because it's a little bit, little bit of a narrow vision. Uh, but yes, I, I, another, another disastrous trip yesterday to the garden centre. Going in for just a couple of items and ending up and spending £65. You know, it happens every blooming time I go in there. We do go to different garden centres, me and uh, uh, my friend Ronnie. We, we like to go to garden centres. Yesterday we went, hello, Ant Sky. Welcome, Ant, Ant Sky. Uh, we love to go around. We walk around there for ages, filling our little basket with bits and pieces. I bought three large bags of earth yesterday for £10 and um, various plants and bits for the hanging baskets. And you may or may not have seen the Hanging Basket video today. That's on my Facebook. Facebook username, Chris Reardon UK. All right, Ant. Um, and I did that today and made a video out of it. And you may have seen that earlier. But it was only on Periscope and now it's on YouTube. Now, on the subject of my short video... Oh, let's just do some messages. Uh, good morning to Brandon, who says, Good evening, bitch. Are you on drugs again, spinning on the chair? I don't take drugs, Brandon. How many times, dear? I don't take drugs, I don't drink, and I don't smoke. Although, today, I cannot lie to you, I had... Are you ready for this? Oh, I don't know how I can tell you, boys and girls, I've let the side down. I had an entire glass of rosé champagne. Yes, I've had a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, uh, in... I was taken out by my best mate, uh, Ronnie, to a hotel where his boyfriend works. Andy works at the Runnymede Hotel on the Thames. Oh, my God. I've had such a nice day. And I, 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 he's been telling me I've got this surprise. Right, I'm going to have to turn the air conditioning on here. It's so hot in here today. I don't know what's brought it, made it so hot in here. Um... Uh, yes, he's been telling me I've got this surprise, and all we, I've, I, I wasn't able to guess at all. I thought it was afternoon tea, then I thought it was a bike, a, a, a boat ride. I don't, and then I thought I was going out somewhere to dinner. Well, it turned out it was afternoon tea at um, his boyfriend's hotel, the Runnymede, where he works, and he's, he's quite high up there. He's, he's worked up there. He's been there, I think, about seven years now, and. Um, uh, he's now 20, uh, 27 or 28, and he's gone quite high up. Now, he's now head something, what is it, head receptionist or something like that. And at times, he's actually manager of the hotel. So he's done really well. And there's a, there's a, there's a thing there to young people everywhere. You know, if you want to get somewhere, get in a large company and work up, but stick to it. You can be someone. You can absolutely be, you can be anyone you want. Right. But you've got to get into a job and you've got to stick to it. There will be times in that job where you get fed up. But stick to it. That time will pass and you keep in and then you gradually move up the ladder. And that's what he's done. And, and I'm so proud of that of him. I really am. 
you know, 28. Okay, it's not a little boy, is he? But to me, he's, he's, he's much younger, you know, because I'm 52. You see people come up like that. And I love that. I love to see people working through the system and up. Even in a supermarket, you know, you start off sweep. You could you can go in a supermarket. I don't know. Um, what, what's the, what's the earliest you can work? Is it 16, 17, 18? I'm not sure. But whatever it is, you go in there, maybe as a shelf stacker, you can end up being the manager of a supermarket. McDonald's. You go in there, you start flipping the burgers. A few years later, you can be running your own store. You've got to stick to it, whatever you're doing. And that's what he's done. And so today, um, I've been at the Runnymede Hotel for some nice afternoon tea. Great big plate of sandwiches and cakes and things like that. Yes, the diet was off the scale today. The diet. <laughs> the diet was completely out of control today and it was by the river. And when I say by the river, we are talking next to the river. When the river floods, so does the hotel. That's how close it is. I had a wonderful time. I've got lots of little video clips that I'll put together and uh, hopefully upload those at some time tomorrow. All right, boys and girls. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I look forward to that. Now, on the subject of my short videos... They're going to change slightly now, OK? We're going to change those a little bit. Oh, by the way, I want to talk today about holidays, OK? Just after I finish this little bit, I'd love to talk today about holidays. Now, we did a little bit of this on Saturday's show, uh, but we didn't have much time because I kind of left it till about 10 to 1 before I started talking about it because uh, I got waylaid, as I always do, talking about other stuff. You know, you, go, you, go, you, you think you're going to go in one direction and it doesn't happen. Or no direction, as the group is known. <laughs> no direction. No, they're doing all right, those boys, aren't they? Um, so I'd like to talk about holidays. Holidays you've really enjoyed, memorable holidays, or perhaps those that were... Ab Why is my air conditioning not working? The little flaps have closed. Why would that... Oh, they're open again. Oh, I thought, I thought we had a major technical fault. We nearly went off air then. Nearly went off air then due to no air conditioning in the studio. Uh, they are no direction. <laughs> no direction. You know the pop group. What makes you beautiful? We're going to live like we're young. I am permanently young, boys and girls. Permanently young. Um, holidays that you remember. Wonderful holidays. Perhaps with friends. On your own. Or disastrous holidays. Maybe you went on a holiday that was absolutely disastrous. Why was that? That's what I'd like to talk about today. So have a little think about that. I'd love you, absolutely love you to call in later on, um, perhaps either on telephone or on Skype. Uh, we've got a Skype in. OK, my Skype in is all one word, United Kingdom Talk. The Skype in, if you've got Skype, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. And you can also send messages via the Skype as well. And there's a local London phone number. Don't call in yet, because I just want to tell you about the short videos before we do that. And the phone-in number is 020 8144 3477, OK? 020 That's the uh, Skype-in number. And then you can just call in and, and we can have a chat on the phone. Uh, we don't tend to do anything really too serious here on the show. Sometimes I touch a little bit here and there, but um, generally phone-in type things are fairly light-hearted. If you've got a funny story to tell, um, then please. Now, who's that? Just oh, someone saying hi, Chris. Uh... Oh, it's Adam. Hello, Adam. And Joey, do you, want, do you want to say something? Go on, speak. Speak now or forever hold thy tongue. And then start holding your tongue. And then the heart. And start holding the tongue like that. How does it <laughs> Tongue holding. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paul says, what happened to Ross Pat Zelt? I thought that Periscope would be right up his street. No, Paul, I don't think so, actually. Um, he was very much a radio person. So, oh, I need to change the colour of the text. Can you not see that? What colour do you want, then? Oh, someone's complaining they can't see the, uh, the text. Is it... I thought red was pretty good. White tends to disappear in the thing behind. That's a trouble. Let me try and do that for you. One minute. Change colour of text. How do I do this, then? Oh, you're so picky today. Is that Jerry being picky? One minute. Text. Hang on, what, what, the text where? The text, what, what, what? The text where? Oh, on Periscope. Can I change the colour of the text on Periscope? Oh. 
Oh, I didn't know that. All right, Joey, you'll have to tell me how to do that later, OK? Not right now. Uh, yeah, Ross Patzelt, he was always a radio man. Um, Paul. He really didn't like when I went from audio only to audio and video. Periscope really wouldn't be his thing. I, don't, I, I really don't. He just doesn't like it. He doesn't like video. I don't know why. That's just his thing, you know? So, uh, uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Um, Shania says, the plant is lovely. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely beautiful, that plant. I think that was about six pounds, that's all. That's that's all. Um, Paul says black is best. Oh, OK, so you are talking about the text on the YouTube, are you? OK, uh, shall I try and change that for you now? Oh, so awkward. Font. OK, let's do... What colour do we want? Black? Try black. How's that? Is that any better? Because that looks even worse to me. We've got black now. Can you see what black's like, Paul? Is that suitable? <laughs> Paul says Ross is too ugly for Periscope. Oh, don't be awful. I'm too ugly for Periscope, believe me. I'm a very ugly person. I never used to be. I've just such seemed to have grown ugly over the years. Hello, Danny. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Right, so... There we are, black. Now, how's that looking now? Marge says, the devoted fans stay. Yes, everyone else disappears. Hello, Russ. Welcome to the show, my friend. OK. Oh, and hello, Kelly Kim, who joins us. Hello, Kelly Kim. Lovely to see you as well. How are we looking with the black, everyone? Can you tell me? Is the black looking any better? Um, Terry has chosen Skype this evening. No periscope for me, although it's so addictive. Yeah, there's so much to see. I, was, I saw, actually, on... Um, someone's Facebook, uh, uh, black is worse. Yeah, I thought it would be. That's why I chose red. All these people try and change things, don't they? OK, let's try... Let's try white. I bet white's even worse. How's white look? And I've done it in bold now. How's that looking? Is that better? Oh, the text might be better at the top. I don't think I can move that to the top. Try that now, white. How's that looking, white? <laughs> white. Is that a racist comment, everyone? Is that racist? By, by saying the word white? <laughs> if you're wondering why I say that, I get fed up with these politically correct people. You, know, you say the wrong words. Oh, you're racist. You're racist or something like that. Or homophobic. Or heterophobic. Or sexist. There's always people screaming that at you. So now I encourage people, when, <laughs> whenever I say something that some idiot would assume to be offensive, to scream at me, I have a racist, sexist or something like that. And I'll be very pleased for that to happen, OK? OK, so white is good, is it? OK, Shania. White is good. OK, we're sticking with white. Well, thank God we got that done. It's 20 past 11 and we've only got as far... <laughs> As, as changing the font. <laughs> We've only got as far as changing the blooming font on the phone number at the bottom of the screen, which the people watching the recordings can't see anyway. <laughs> Hello, AD. Thank you, Terry. White is best for text, so we're, we're keeping with the white there, OK? And, um, yes, the text in bold looks better as well. Thank you very much, Shania. Um, <laughs> a hello, a very big hello to Craig, who's watching us. Craig is a presenter at a hospital radio station. Hello, Craig. Welcome along. What news do you have today for us, Craig? Anything exciting there? Uh, then do let us know. Email address as well. If you want to join in by email, maybe you're not watching the show live and you're watching a recording of the show. Doesn't mean you can't join in. You can indeed join in by email. My email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk, right, Chris at United Kingdom Talk uh, dot co dot uk. I'd like to talk today uh, to start with. Twenty minutes into the show, <laughs> after selecting our font for the phone number about holidays. Now, I'd love for you to call in about this holidays. Good, bad. Where have you been over the years? What have you really enjoyed? Do you have any, like, really, really memorable moments, perhaps? Hmm? Anything like that? Maybe you had a disaster on holiday at some point. Then I would like to know about it. Please call in and talk to me, OK? Um, 
my phone number 020 3477 it's a local london number you will not be charged any sort of premium rate it's just a normal local london number 020 3477 we have a skype in as well my skype username is all one word united kingdom talk United Kingdom Talk, all one word, that's the Skype username. It'd be lovely for you to uh, call in and talk about your holidays. All right, my darlings. Um, Kelly Kim has already sent a message in. A message has flooded in, boys and girls, from Kelly Kim telling us that her favourite holidays are with Disney. La 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 When you wish upon a star Blimey, Zoe's back from the bath already. That must that was quick, Zoe. Blimey, you can't be that clean, darling. How can you have been clean how can you have had a bath in five minutes? I bet you're really dirty. Get back in that bath immediately and get some scrubbing done, dear. Scrub, 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 scrub. Have you done underneath your arms? Jim, oh, you're in the bath now, Zoe. Oh, Christ, I'm not looking, Zoe, honestly. I'm not. We're not looking at Zoe in the bath. Or maybe just a peek. No, no, I'm not looking. <laughs> so Kelly Kim um, has enjoyed Disney. And Disney. Kelly, would you like to call in? I wonder if you'd like to call in, Kelly. Oh, I've got a call now from Marge. Let's go to Marge. Hello, Marge. How are you? Just making small adjustments to her microphone. Are you ready, Marge? Hello? Hello, Marge. Uh-oh. You sound like you're having I'm trouble good. there, darling. No, I just don't have my headset on. <laughs> oh, well, put it on, dear. Don't don't you rush, you know. We're, 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 we're here all night long, don't worry. I may do six hours tonight. I haven't decided yet. Okay. Do oh, th- shoot. Do you think people... I Right here. Do you think people would stay for six hours, Marge? Huh? Do you think people would stay here for six hours with us? Oh, I think so. Can you just hold your breath about two seconds? Oh, is that wise? I'm putting my earphones on. My tablet, I couldn't hear you very well with this tab. I don't know why in the world. Oh, isn't it a good job that people, people on the phone don't have all this problem? We'd never get anything done, dear. I don't call it, there's no such thing as problems in life. There's only challenges. Challenges. I'm very, (laughs) very, I'm mentally challenged, I am. I believe the term is, Marge. Mentally challenged. That's me, darling. I wasn't sure if you were ready for me to call in yet. And uh, Yes, we're talking about holidays, Marge. What holidays, what holiday chat have you got to talk to us about? I was racking my brain because I haven't had a holiday in so long. (laughs) But I was trying to think back about one that was... uh, my first boyfriend, or well, the only the only boyfriend I've ever had. Anyway, I went on a date. Yes. A uh, Six Flags over Texas. I guess I, is that considered a holiday. Where is it again? Six Flags over Texas. Six flights, did you say? Six Flags. Do I need to put my teeth in? Can you? <laughs> so, well, uh, you're not calling in this show with no teeth in your head, are you, Marge? Oh, worse. my word, dear. Honestly, will people please have their <laughs> teeth in when they call into this program? How rude is that? Curlers in my hair and, you know, OK. Anyway, I went to Six Flags over Texas. Six Flags? Um, Are you saying Six flag. Flags? <laughs> OK, don't get me tickled. I have to go get my Depends. What is Six <laughs> Flags? I don't understand what that is. Flags, F L A G S. Yes. Flags. They're flag like your your the your Union Jack but, uh, flag. Yeah, That's yeah. A flag. Yeah, but I don't understand. They have, so you you've said what you what you've said to me. I, I've said to you. Have you had any holidays? Yes, I've been to Six Flags over Texas. I don't understand that that sentence. <laughs> oh God. Explain, dear. What is six flags? Oh, I'll type it into bloody Google. It'll be a lot easier than trying to get it out of you, wouldn't it? Just a minute. Six flags. I'll see if anything can... Six flags over Texas. What the hell is this woman talking about? Six flags. Ah! 
So it's it's a mm. tourist attraction. Yes, sir. Well, I'm why sorry. didn't you I say that, it. dear? Why didn't you say knows. that? God's well, sake, that was our bloody work, weren't it, dear? Oh, God, we need a translator. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a theme park, Six Flags Over okay. Texas. Don't get me <laughs> yeah, Now I anyway, understand. Went with, this, went, went with this boyfriend. I went with the guy I was working with. He took me to Six Flags. On holiday. Yes. Okay. Mm. And so it, I'd never been there. And it's like your Walt Disney kind of place. It's got little themes, you know, and stuff. And we went up on the roller coaster, uh, which I'd never been on a roller coaster. Oh, ride. I wouldn't go on one of those, and dear. This, no, it, never in a thousand years. I was just, I, I'll never again. But, you know, um, I held my breath and my, my fingers went snow white the whole ride. And all <laughs> he would say... All he would say was, oh, S-H-I-T, oh, S-H-I-T. <laughs> I said, this is big money. <laughs> Did you open your I mean, eyes on those, on, those, um, on those roller coasters? Did you actually open your eyes? Yeah, I would say, I mean, I, I screamed uh, most of the way, but all he yeah. would say was, oh, S-H-I-T. <laughs> you see, I, I got so gentle. He was so macho, you know, this big macho guy. And I mean, he, he said, I don't think we want to do that again. <laughs> that sucker was... <laughs> Well, we had a fun time, but of course, I I really enjoyed the boats. You know, and they had them, them um, a lot of they had real animals, but those uh, hippopotamus, you know, they come up out of the water and they spray you. Then you, it was real hot. I mean, it was a real hot day in the evening. It started getting really hot, so we'd go to the rides wherever they spray water on you. <laughs> is it <laughs> is it in Dallas? Is it near Dallas? Yeah, Fort Worth, Dallas. It's right oh, in between right, there okay. somewhere, I think. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when, when I was a kid, my dad was going to take us there. I was excited. Oh, we're going to Six Flags. It's like going to Walt Disney, you know, for us. Oh, you know, okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ke Ke Kelly, Kelly it's Kim, I think, has been there. She was just telling me. Um, she just sent a message in to say the rides there are really awesome. Yeah, well, it's, there's, the flags are like uh, state flag. I don't remember all the, the meanings of different flags. Yes. I'd have to look. I'd have to Google that myself. I need to be more informed myself. Uh, just, anyway, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. You're going on about these flags again. What What do you mean, flags? There's flags that they have there that represent certain. Gosh, I didn't know I was going to have a test. I just studied. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we. I don't know what you're talking about. You see. We have many, many <laughs> United Kingdom people watching and they're thinking, what on earth is she going on about? Six Flags. Think we about, don't know what that is. Think about, going to, think about going to the United Nations. You see all those flags lined up down through there? Yes. Each flag represents a certain, well, there's like the a country. Like your Union Jack. That it, well, I don't know if it's a country. Like I said, I well, no, no. If you go to the United Nations and the flags are there, each, day, each flag yeah. represents a different country. Okay. So where well, is... Then, I don't understand what Six Flags of Texas either. is. I'll, what does that mean? I'll, that's the name of the of the the, the, the resort thing. It's, it's those, it has those six... I'll have to Google it myself. Maybe some of your viewers know. I ah, know they got the yes. Texas flag, Kelly they Kim. The United States flag. They Kelly Kim has a, just sent in a message... And she says they represent the different areas of the park. Now I understand. So there's a different flag for each area of the park. Now why can you tell me that? You're in America. She's in the UK. In London of all places, dear. In hard to let property. Well, I didn't. I've been there since 1976, dear. So I don't remember. <laughs> Somebody, they ain't nobody took me anymore. <laughs> Oh, that is funny. Yeah, so go on. So this, how old were you then when this boy took you there? Mm, uh, and why did say seventy six? No, it was eighty six. Eighty six. And why, why didn't why didn't you marry him? Uh, well, he had a wife, and he had a <laughs> wife. Oh my God, this gets better and better. God's sake, what sort of woman are you breaking up families like that, dear? <laughs> Jesus. He was I mean, I'm going to have to cover up my cross in a moment, my holy cross of Jesus. I've never heard anything like it in all my life, dear. This is this is the most shocking call I've ever dealt with on this programme live, dear. Terrible. <laughs> he was a co-worker. We went as friends. I said boyfriend. I kind of liked him, but he was married, but he was separated. Then his wife got pregnant and had twins, so he went back to his wife. <laughs> 
this, oh, this, this is a whole TV series, Marge. You need to get in contact with NBC and try and tell them the story. This could be more. This could be more popular than Dallas or Dynasty ever was. We'll get back to the holiday. Well, I don't know if oh, I well. can. I mean, I I feel I ought to terminate the call. There are very, very people people with very, very sensitive ears listening to this program. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, Terrible. <laughs> Make me sound like I'm a very. You know, I've only dated twice in my whole life, and I'm 55 years old. <laughs> no, I, if I was a Christian, I'd swear on the Bible. Now. <laughs> How merry, full of grace. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nobody going to have me. <laughs> <laughs> I found that as well. <laughs> well, you're independent, probably. You um, got yeah, some that's, I'm well, you know. You know what? Do you know what, Marge? The the other night, actually, um, I was working. I was doing a karaoke night in uh, Central London, a place called Central Station. And not Central London, at North, in King's Cross, play called Central Station, where I do the karaoke every Friday night. And uh, the manager was 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 down at the bar, he quietly getting drunk as he always does. He's a lovely chap called Duncan. And uh, we got into the, the subject of of of, of relationships now. And I said to Duncan, I said, you know what? I don't know why I've never found that one. I've never found that one. Um, and he started talking, and as he was talking, someone called me, right, uh, to, to do with something with the karaoke, yeah? And I said, oh, I'll be back in a minute, Duncan. And he said, Chris, that's why you've never found anyone. So I ran back and I ran back to the person, sorted out what was going on and came back to Duncan. I said, what do you mean? He said, that's why you're, that, that's why you're not with someone. And, and basically, because I've always put the job first. You know, if something to do with the work distracts my attention, I'm straight off to go and sort that out and leave whoever well, I'm like talking my, to. If you yeah. like, I'm sorry, if you're like me in some ways, you, you like things a certain way too in your life. And some, sometimes um, other people like to edit that, you know, change your routine or try to change you or, yes. or you know. Oh, <laughs> and you like, oh you God, know. yeah. The, I mean, the people that, a few people have tried to change change me over the years. It doesn't work, I'm afraid I'm off. Well, they, oh, they I'm off, you, mate. They, no. They, they, Thank you as you are. No yeah. matter what, if yeah. you're quirky, whoever you are, you know, that's that's yeah. the package yeah. deal, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, change, don't ch try to change people. And that's what happens to me. They all say, oh, you make a good worker. I say, I work for myself. I ain't working for no man. Yeah, I can understand <laughs> that. <laughs> You don't like to I'm do the cooking then, no? <laughs> you know? I mean, of course, I'm not the most attractive in the world. I'm overweight and I'm, you know, I've lost all my teeth. <laughs> I said, one day, maybe if I can't run very fast, maybe, you have know. You put your teeth, have you put your teeth in yet, by the way, Marge? No. Well, we can't have people on here that are not speaking with their teeth in, dear. I can't. God I talk sake, better woman, honestly. My, I talk better without What is going on because tonight? They're, they're not. They're not right. I don't. They don't fit right. I've got to go get. I'm going to go pay twelve hundred dollars and get me some new pearlies. Well, I, 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 I can't believe it. You know, here I am, supposed trying to do this hard hitting, politically based chat show. You know, and we got people ringing in with no teeth who go around splitting up families oh and spend their I entire lives on roller coasters. Dear. You're sitting there all nice and, and handsome with your, your jacket. And handsome, do me so a favour. Right. Handsome was well, ten years ago, Marge. No, you're very attractive. If you, if you weren't gay, I'd be chasing you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would say I'm attracted to gay men. Well, don't let that safe. stop you. <laughs> <laughs> gay men are safe, so you won't be bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> you can cook for me. Don't let that stop you. Let, Why is you, this blooming air conditioning not chumping out cold air? I don't know what's going on here. It's all going terribly. Anyway, I said I was married a gay man. That way I won't, he won't be messing with me. He can clean house. He can go have his boyfriends. You know, just be a good companion, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and there won't be no problems, you know. Oh, anyway, Marge. Anyway, you're sitting there like that. He well, got me in my T-shirt and no, no, no socks or, you know, casual and... Anyway, laid back. Absolute <laughs> but, pleasure uh, talking to you tonight, Marge, my darling, all right? Well, anyway, that was my holiday and I made it home. But <laughs> Six flags, yeah. Six <laughs> flags. <laughs> you have a lovely evening, all right? Bye-bye, Marge. Bye. I'm watching the show, bye. Cheerio, there we are. The lovely Marge in Oklahoma, US of A. <laughs> Oh, dear, dear me. Your holidays. I want to talk about your holidays. Call in. 
come and have a chat with me tonight. 020 3477 is my phone number, OK? 020 3477 You heard how the chat works. It's very light-hearted. We're not talking hard-hitting questions, OK? Nothing like that. It's very light-hearted. 020 3477 is the uh, phone-in number. You can only call in while there's no one else talking. I can't do two calls at once. Well, I can join them together, but it all starts getting a little bit messy and, you know, people talk on top of each other. Uh, there's a Skype in as well. My Skype in is all one word, United Kingdom Talk. United Kingdom Talk is the Skype in. Some messages coming through. Uh, Shania was saying I was wondering what Six Flags over Texas was. Yes, it was Kelly Kim, actually, uh, who told us it's, it's a theme park in... Um, in the USA. I'll tell you what, I'll post the link on my Twitter. I've got Twitter. My Twitter username is Chris Reardon UK. Chris Reardon UK. Just uh, do a little follow thing there and then you'll find my tweets and I've just tweeted that link there uh, to the theme park Six Flags over Texas. Um, it says it's got, look, look at the rides here. It's got, um, Let's have a look. Thrill, thrill rides, serious roller coasters, family rides. Now, see, that, that would be the thing for me. Family rides. OK, I don't like those white knuckle rides. You know, the ones where you're going up these roller coasters higher and higher and higher and you get on top and you can't see anything other than the drop down. Not my idea of a wonderful day out. Please don't ever, ever take me on a roller coaster. I have been on a couple of roller coasters, both only in Disney. Only in Disney. Um, there was this thing that looked like a log. OK. And then it, it drops down into this river. I've been on that. I've been on Space Mountain. I hated it. And I've been on the yellow train. Is it railroad? Rocky Road? Rocky Rail? Uh, what is it? Rocky Road? Something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't can't remember what that is, but 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 that they're the rides I've been on, and I hated them. Gary Butler says teacups and saucer rides. Now they're not too bad, but I did go on one of those with my nephew Jimmy. Uh, I always talk about this. We went on holiday, not the January just gone, the one before uh, for his Christmas present, and we had a wonderful time there. And uh, one of the things we went on was the teacups and saucers. And I was, and, and it starts spinning this thing and I'm feeling more and more ill. So I closed my eyes. Actually, if you close your eyes on these spinning things, it's not too bad. And he's trying to spin this thing faster and faster. And you, you spin this thing by turning the wheel in the middle. And I'm holding on to it, you know, trying to stop him from turning it so quickly. But he was pulling it round and trying to spin this thing fast and fast to make me ill. That's why he was doing it. To make me ill. Poor Uncle Chris. And that's got to be one of my favourite holidays of all time, that. It really was uh, fantastic. Do your chair spin again. It was too close. Was close to be too much for you. Oh, do you want me to do my chair spin again? OK. Why is that? Why do you want me to do a chair spin? There we are, there we are then. Are you ready? <coughs> <coughs> There we are, a chair spin for you. Do you want it faster? Did you want me to go clockwise or anti-clockwise on the chair spin? Please vote now. One for clockwise, two for anti-clockwise. Quickly, you have five seconds. Four, three, oh, two. So that's anti-clockwise. OK, guys, anti-clockwise now. That's enough now, I shall get dizzy. Thank you. Sound effect was brilliant. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he was spinning these cups faster and faster, and it was most annoying. Most annoying. Figure of eight. I can't do a figure of eight in here. Don't be silly, Kelly Kim. Uh, Paul Edwards says Marge is a naughty girl. Yes, yeah, she is. Breaking up families like that is absolutely shocking. I'm shocked, believe me. I thought she was a good Christian holy girl, our Marge. But she's not. She goes around breaking up families. <laughs> Even if they were split up. Doesn't matter, Marge. They might have got back together. In fact, they probably did. That's why I didn't ask you out again. <laughs> uh, Paul says, my favourite holiday was the first time me and Suzanne uh, took our children to Rockley, Paul, Rockley Park in Pool. 
uh, Dorset uh, back in 1989. Gosh, that seems so long ago now. 89, 99, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's 26 years ago, Paul. 26 years ago, 1989. Unbelievable, isn't it? Gosh, uh, it was so lovely and the beaches are so wonderful, especially when the sun shines and it did. So, oh, yeah, I mean, that sounds lovely. Lovely. Um, Paul says, did you check out my first Periscope broadcast? Because no one else did. No, I, no, I would have been at work, my darling. I would have been at work, Paul, um, uh, when your Periscope was on, I'm afraid. Uh, and a recording of Periscopes only is up there for 24 hours, then they're gone. Unless you save it to your phone and upload it elsewhere. Because you can actually save your Periscope um, broadcast to the phone and then upload it to Facebook if you want to do it, something like that. That's what I've been doing anyway. Uh, Terry H says, my favourite holidays have been, for the past two years, have been centre parks with the family. F very enjoyable. Now, centre parks, Terry, yes. Um, there is something that I've thought about many times, actually, centre parks. I quite like the idea of that. But I've, I've, I've bumped into people who say they're horrendously expensive. Um, number one, it's expensive in the first instance, you know, when you go and book it and pay for everything. And number two, once you get there, you're not to assume that everything is free because it's not. And you have to pay for extras like bikes, bike rides and I don't know, things, things like that. Is that right, Terry? Perhaps you can shine a little bit more light on that. But uh, Terry likes the old centre parks. I, I've thought about going to centre parks before myself, uh, to be honest. Um, Brandon says... Do you know why I had to add you on the desktop computer on Skype, but not my laptop? No, you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to add um, people to Skype on one uh, gadget and then it spreads across all of them. So I don't don't know why that would be, um, Brandon. No idea. Brandon, have you been on any holidays? Where have you been on any holidays? Anywhere nice? So I don't know. Shania thinks uh, I should do clockwise. So I did do clockwise. I'm very entertaining. Thank you, Shania. I'm here to, to entertain. <clears throat> Try hard as I might. Right, I don't like to miss any messages, so I, I constantly check on these. Let's have a look. Uh, Craig says, I've got the DJ and radio legend Noel Edmonds. Oh, wow. Noel Edmonds, who's just recently followed me on Twitter. How fantastic is that? For, to be followed by Noel Edmonds. I don't think I've got any celebrities following me at all. I must be a very boring person. <laughs> I say, yeah, that's Chris Rudd. He, need it. he doesn't like to fit in the box. He does his own thing. That's why I'm not on proper radio. Because <laughs> I do my own thing, and that's it. Uh, Craig says, um, uh, hospital radio news, voice artist David Graham, voice of Parker, and the... Uh, Parker. You know Parker, don't you? Yes, my lady. Thunderbirds. Yes, my lady. Parker. Yes, my lady. We like Parker. Um, uh and the original Dalek Voices, 1960s, has emailed me saying today he'd love to visit Castle Mead Radio in June before Andacon 2015 in Leicester. So I'm in the process of sorting that out. What is Andacon? We don't know what Andacon is. Don't know what it is. So if you're going to send in something like that, you, you've got to tell us what it is because I don't know what that is. Andacon. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to sort out our 25th hospital radio birthday party. Things are going smoothly at the moment. Uh, got the catering, cake and room sorted. Invitation cards have been made. Some of our special guests' home address got and cards are to be sent very soon. Anthony Head, David Graham, Mark Shreve, uh, electronic music artists from the 1980s. I think the new Thunderbirds Are Go series is really good, but we're missing Jeff Tracy, the dad of the Tracy family. Well, he's probably, he's probably dead by now, isn't it? <laughs> if, <laughs> if they've all moved on, you know, in real time, then, then the dad would be dead, wouldn't he? That that might be it. I don't know. I'm really looking forward to meeting David Graham in the next few weeks. Uh, watching your show. Take care. So David Graham, voice of Parker. Yes, my lady. Yes, my lady. Wouldn't it be lovely to have a butler? Would you like that? Have your own butler, you know, open the door on your car as you go through. Or I don't know, you know, uh, you know, when it's dinner time. Are you ready for dinner, sir? Now, my air conditioning's working now. I'm pleased about that. Let's, let's come back on. 
um, and just, I don't know, just like sit there and be served your dinner and all that business. I don't think it's a form of slavery at all. Some people would think it's a form of slavery. No, it's not. It's a job. It's a job, isn't it? I know a butler. I actually know a butler. He comes to my karaoke. I, I won't reveal who he is, but he works for, are you ready for this, the Queen and the Royal Family, right? And also the Prime Minister. He's butlered those people. Very, very important people. Apparently the money is very good. And he loves it. He absolutely loves the job. Um, I did have a, 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 another friend who was a butler. Um, his name's Wayne. <clears throat> and he was trained and had a couple of jobs. But he had one particular job. And he said the woman was really nasty. He left in the end. She was just vile to him. Complaining all the time. Moaning old cow. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, I don't care how much money you've got. Or who you are. There are ways to talk to people. I bet the Queen has never spoken to someone like they're a piece of dirt. I bet she hasn't. So what right does anyone have to talk to someone like they're a bit of dirt? And they do. They do. Isn't that a shame? Anyway, he was spoken to like a piece of dirt. So he actually gave up being a butler and uh, got another job that he's uh, very happy in now. So, yeah, interesting. Having your own butler like that. I like the idea of that. Who would, does anyone like to be my butler? I'd be quite easy. I reckon I'd be quite easy to perhaps serve. Is, is that the word, serve? I don't know if that's a word or not really, is it? Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Terry H. On the subject of centre parks, where he likes to go on holiday, he says, yes, there are some extras, <clears throat> but you can take your own bikes if you want and obviously take your own food. Depends what you like to do. Your holiday can be full of walks in the forest, if you like, and cycling or the extra activities, if you choose. What extra activities are on offer, um, Terry? I mean, for example, they have a big swimming pool. Would that be included in the holiday price? What does the... How can I put this? What does the... Um, what does the original price that you pay up front include what what would that include please and stuff like the the nice swimming pool is that included or, or is that an extra and if it's an extra how much does it cost i'm absolutely fascinated by this um center parks thing you know it might be quite nice to take my um my nephews and nieces families there if it's not too expensive i don't know how much expensive it would be to take all those people there that'd be quite nice um uh craig says ah andacon andacon 2015 it's a sci-fi convention thank you to celebrate the works of jerry anderson yeah that makes sense and loads of people go along as they do talks question and answer panels autographs with the guests from jerry anderson productions it's in their second year and this time it's at leicester thank you craig uh yeah it's interesting actually the um <clears throat> The whole autographs with celebrity type thing appear to have changed recently. And that is something called meet and greet. Now, they're all doing it from big, huge stars to minor celebrities off the television. That is meet and greet. Now, it used to be where... You would go and see someone perform somewhere. Um, anyone really. And, you know, at the end of the performance, you could possibly wait round the back. And if if you're lucky, they come out and you get their autograph. Maybe, a, you, if, you know, you, it's only sort of fairly recently. I think you, people have been asking for pictures with various celebrities. And, and that would be that. You know, you, you'd go and watch them perform, go around the back. Or, Can I have your autograph, please? Yeah, sure. And they'd sign a bit of paper and all that business. Now, recently, we seem to, in the last couple of years, got into this meet and greet culture. And it's a shame. Because, quite frankly, I think the money some of these people get is... Rather high. I don't have a problem with that. 
But then they do this meet and greet thing where, for an additional fee, you get to meet that person for a minute or two, probably no more than that. And you say hello and they sign your bit of paper and maybe have a photo card. But that is now an additional fee. And it's a shame that that's happened because I think they get enough money. Even the minor celebrities who have turned up perhaps to open a club or appear, maybe a drag queen or something like that. I'm, I'm actually offended by... If I'd paid to go and see someone and then I'd like their autograph. Oh, yeah, you can have my autograph. That's another £15, please. I think that's a bit greedy, don't you? Or do you think that's all right? Maybe you think that's all right. I know if I'd have been doing a show or something and I'd come off the stage and everyone was clapping, which is unlikely. <laughs> Especially if I've just been singing, to be honest. You know, if I've been doing it and I come off the stage and I would be honoured, honoured if someone then came up to me or 10 people or 100 people came up to me with an autograph. Oh, could you sign this for me, please? And yeah, I would be honoured that they they wanted to speak to me or something like that. Of course, you wouldn't have time to speak to everyone, but that's, that's just how it is. But to actually go then and ask for more money... Just to have a couple of minutes with someone, I think, is a bit much. Now, um, SCTV says, Tonight only, Chris Reardon, meet and greet after the show. Only $25, not including photos. Yes, we'll do that tonight. Good idea, SCTV. We'll do that tonight. After I finish the show, I will be appearing on my doorstep. And for just $25, I will happily talk to you personally for one minute. <laughs> but, I mean, on the other hand... What what else could I possibly have to say after I've done this? You know, I've, by, 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 by the end of the show, I've usually run out of words. There are no words left in my vocab. They've gone. You know, I have to, I have to get out my... After I've finished the show, uh, if I want to phone someone up, I have to get out my Oxford English Dictionary. This was my mum's. Look at this. This is, this is what you call a dictionary. Look how big this is. Look, that was my mum's. Yeah, I pull out my dictionary <laughs> and I just choose words at random. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a minute. We'll choose a word at random and see if I can talk about it. <laughs> Shall I do that? <laughs> so I, I, I do think that's a bit unfair doing that, but I don't know how we got into the subject of the meet and greet there. Uh, Terry H says, ah, the swimming is free and it has restaurants in there so you can spend the full day there. Extra activities can be the spa. Archery. Oh, my God, dear. Are you going to be Robin Hood? Terry. <laughs> Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his merry men. And they were a bit sus, weren't they? Be honest. Robin Hood's merry men. All sounds a little bit sus to me, dear. <laughs> and it's the little tunics. SCTV says, your house must be huge just to store your dictionary and calculator. Well, the calculator's here. Just in case we need to make any any rapid calculations that I can't do in my head. Because I'm not very good at multiplying and dividing. You know, all right, I can divide two by two and that gives you one. I can divide ten by two, that'll give me five. But don't ask me to divide 7.5 by 2.3. Impossible. I can't do long division. And I can't do something multiplication. I can't remember what that is now. But I can add up pretty well. And I can minus pretty well as well. First time I've remembered to bring a cup of water in here. Look at that. Which, just before I started the show, spilt all over my text. <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, extra activities, archery. Who's that just joined us? Joey, you still here? Keep with it, Joey. Keep with it, my friend. Yeah, we do a bit of archery. Um, tree climbing. My God, Terry, you don't climb up trees, do you, dear? Poor trees. You're only supposed to go up those trees, Terry, if you're under a certain weight, my darling. Be carry. Be careful. Not carry. Be careful, dear. Poor trees. Keep off the trees, Terry. Christ's sake. 
Uh, falconry. Is that the thing with birds that you catch on your sleeves? Oh, I love birds. Funny enough, and you'll see this in the uh, short video I did of the Runnymede uh, Hotel today. Um, uh, there were two ducks there. And they come really close to us. We were feeding them with the unwanted scones. Because Ronnie ate so much, you know, he couldn't fit any more into that little stomach of his. I say little. You know. I mean, I'm, I was quite surprised that he couldn't fit anything into that stomach. Actually, at the moment, my best mate is, uh, is uh, he's got to wear a back brace now. Because he's got a bad back, something to do with the bones. He's about to go in for a couple of operations. And the brace is quite tight. And I actually think, it, it's a bit like a cor I don't think it's a brace at all. I think it's a corset. My best mate is wearing a corset now, in de taking desperate measures now to try and look thin. <laughs> That's, it's, I don't think it's a back brace at all, it's a corset. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm full up now. And there is, oh, that's really, that's working. I think maybe that air conditioning, because it's been off all winter, and I've just turned it on, it was having trouble getting going, but it's working now, fine. I'm getting a bit chilly in here now, to be honest. Um, yes, I think it's a corset. And it was so tight, you couldn't fit in that, that last scone with jam and cream. Oh, Oh my God, we had so many calories this afternoon. You will see that in my short video. You can find all my short videos by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That's the main website for all the uh, strange and little things, uh, strange things I do, okay? Um, Mark misses the quiz nights. What quiz nights are they, Mark? What quiz nights are they, Mark? You don't come to any quiz nights. Only the one in Islington. You never came to the Mayflower, did you? Wednesday night. That's next week, my friend. I've got a quiz night next week. Yeah, I'm doing a quiz next week. Anyone who's around here in London, I'll be hosting a quiz at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Islington. That's next Wednesday night at 8.30. We do have a bit of a laugh. If you like this show, you'll like the quiz. Fi Mark's had just said to me, fix it for me. No! I can't do something like that. I can't fix the quiz. If I started cheating like that, where would it all end, dear? You know, we can't do something like that. Do you know, over the years, Mark, I can't lie to you, um, I've run various competitions, karaoke competitions and things like that, and you do, you seriously get people coming up to you, saying to you, hey, Chris, I tell you what, if you let me win tonight, I'll give you half the money, or I'll do this, or and then they offer certain I don't know if I can tell you this. They offer you certain favours. Yes, dear. Oh, shocking. To think that I would be tempted by such a thing. Good Catholic boy that I am. Mind you, there was this cute one. No, no, I wouldn't be tempted like that. They do. They absolutely offer you certain favours. We're not talking money. Or, you know, I've given away holidays. It might be a holiday for two. Chris, if you let me win, I'll take you with me. Oh, no, you won't. You're a liar. Liar, liar, pants are on fire. No, you won't. You'll go on that holiday and you won't even mention it again. Yes. Think I'm blooming stupid. Oh, dear. And that is the favours that shock me. Chris, if you let me win, I'll do this for you. I'm not saying anything else. I'm not. This is a family programme. It really is. Um, falconry. Now, the falconry, Terry H, sounds really good, actually. To have a great big bird land on your arm like that must be fan. fun. Um, Brandon says, Just found out Skype on the main computer was a different version. New updated one. Yes, dear, I'm not calling in with my dreadful voice. You were great on the phone the other time, Brandon. Oh, Little Brandon going to call me. Please, little Brandon, call me. I want someone to talk to. I'm so sad and lonely and old here, sitting in my studio. SCTV wants to know, was the favour they promised to weed the garden? No, that wasn't the favour. It was a more personal favour. It wasn't just one person. This is many times over the years. It's shocking what people will do, dear, just to win a prize. You haven't got to do any of that. All you've got to do is get up your general knowledge a bit. Mark says, Brandon, you were great on the phone the last time. So call in. Call in. 
020-8144-3477. That's the number. Mark, have you ever been on holiday? Do you want me to talk about your uh, holidays? Oh, someone sent me some pictures, I think. One second. Uh, did I miss these? Oh, photos. Brandon says, I will be your cleaner and make you cups of tea and some food, but not your slave. Now, what's this pictures he sent me here? Can I open those? Now, I've told you before not to send me pictures. Oh, is that your is that your house, Brandon? Oh, it's very clean. Oh, hang on a minute. There's two dents. Have you got a double bed? What are these pictures you've just sent me? Oh, no, hang on. Am I looking at the wrong ones? I'm looking at the wrong pictures. <laughs> Let's try that again. Show in folder. How do I do this? I've told you before about sending me pictures while I'm trying to do the show, Brandon. I'm seeing a picture of a double bed. Is that your picture or not? And it's got a dent in the middle where you haven't ironed the sheet properly. How awful. <laughs> uh, yes, it is one of your pictures. Why have you sent me a picture of a double bed with um, um, unironed uh, uh, sheets, Brandon? That is disgusting. I thought you was a clean, nice, neat person. Well, I'm shocked, to be honest. Shocked, Brandon. That you would have the audacity to send me a picture of sheets with dents in the middle. Where obviously your fat ass has been laying. Iron those dents out. Please, before you say... And then resend the picture. Thank you. Marge says, uh, uh, tell Brandon uh, to call your voices lovely. See, Brandon, they all love your voice. They love your voice. Shania says, ring in, Brandon. You were so really good last time. Come on. Oh, Brandon says the picture that he sent in was a lodge I went to in Derbyshire. How disgusting. It's filthy, isn't it? The, that lodge is filthy, dear. Oh, oh, look at the bathroom. How awful. It's got like a white um, basin, but with a cream-coloured bin. I mean, it just doesn't even match. My best mate Ronnie would have a heart attack if he saw that. He'd absolutely have heart attack because everything in his house has to, ma has, to, has, to, um, has to match up, doesn't it? It really does. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, he's talking about his holiday there. I'm just going to go back onto that holiday in a minute. Is Jerry still with us? Just check in to see if he's hanging on. Jerry, are you still with us this evening? Or have I managed to make you drift off to sleep? I'm, I'm wondering who's now not with us. Who's... <laughs> <laughs> who have we sent to sleep to tonight? Hello to our good friend Mike, who's in Brighton. Oh, Jerry's still there as well. Hello, Jerry. He's managed that. You've been with us a whole hour now, Jerry. How did you manage that? <laughs> I do enjoy these Wednesday late shows that we do occasionally. They're fantastic. Uh, yeah, Mike, Mike in Brighton's with us today. Hello, Mike. Mike, would you like to email me in about uh, any wonderful holidays that you've had? Or indeed any disastrous holidays that you've had as well. Okay. Can I just quickly, before I go back onto the holidays thing, tell you about um, a couple of little changes to the short videos uh, we do. Now, as you well know, uh, I've started using Periscope. So there's the Periscope videos and there's the YouTube videos. And what I'd like to do is bring it all together now. OK, now I've been waiting for Periscope to bring out landscape mode. The moment they only have portrait mode, which is kind of a thin screen. I'm waiting for them to bring. I've been waiting for them to bring out landscape mode. So it goes across as indeed your widescreen telly would do. Right. But they haven't done it yet. Now, I don't know when they're going to do it. Um, and I was waiting for it to happen, but I don't know when it's going to happen. So. I've decided, uh, after realising kind of what's happening with my, with my um, bits and pieces, that I need to do this now. And one of the reasons is um, I'm doing three times as much now, twice, three times as much. OK, so this means the way I do the short videos will kind of change a bit, but you'll get more, probably. Now, what I've been doing before with the short videos is the day before making a video, putting it all together and uploading it to be released around about midnight the next day. So if you're, for example, watching Thursday's video, it would have been recorded on Wednesday or indeed maybe Tuesday. So it was like a, a scheduled affair. 
You understand what I mean? Like a scheduled thing. So I'd record it a couple of days before, the day before, upload it, set it to release at 12 o'clock, and at 12 o'clock, it would go out and become that day's video. Um, the difference between recording a live video and a recorded video, I mean, I have found remarkably different. I don't know if you found it any different watching one or the other, but with a recorded thing, I find myself mucking around and thinking, oh, is that right? Oh, is that going to be right? Oh, is that right? Oh, is that right? You know, and worrying and then maybe doing it two or three times until I was happy with the result and then putting it together and sending it up. With the live videos, once you've hit that start button, that's it. You're on. It's like those of you watching this video live tonight. OK, it's and how do you know if it's live? Well, it's coming up to nine minutes past midnight on Thursday, the 14th of May 2015. If that's the time where you are now. Or that's a time that's the UK time, I say, OK, we're in UK time. That's a time in the UK now. That's a time for you now that you are indeed watching us live. There has been no rehearsal. This hasn't been done two or three times first until I'm happy. You literally, and it's the same with the periscope. You push the button and you are on. Any mistakes, any lighting not right, anything falls down, it's going to be there. And same as this show now. If you're watching this show live, it's happening now. Okay? If, and, and, and even the same with the recording, if you are watching a recording of this show, you are still in effect watching it live because anything that happens, you will see. Nothing is cut out. Any mistakes? Someone might grab the phone and think they're clever, quickly swear on the phone when they're calling in and put it down quickly. You might get one word in, but that's about all, mate, you know, because I'll block you then and you won't be able to call back. So it doesn't really bother me, the fact that, you know, someone might suddenly swim and, and then quickly put the phone down. No, because you'll get one word in, I'll pull the fader down and I'll block you. You won't be able to do it again. So that doesn't bother me too much. So everything you see in is, is live. And there is definitely something different about recording a show as live, as indeed this is, or recording a recorded show. So that is making sure everything's all right, cameras in position there, lights are on there, this, this and this. You've got your bit of paper here and, and all that. And, um, you know, if I'm sitting there and perhaps I, I might not get a word because often I'm, I, you know, I want to I'm trying to find a word in my head and it's not coming. So I can stop the video, think of the word or look it up and then continue. Well, I can't do that if it's live. And the live definitely has something that a recorded show doesn't. It really does. Now, I'm not saying that there'll be no more recorded shows because there will be instances. For example, on my trip today to that beautiful Runnymede Hotel, right? I couldn't have done that live because there's lots of little bits happening all over the place. And then I put it all back together, which I haven't done yet. I put it all together and make a video out of it. So there is still space for the live shows, uh, for the recorded shows to do those. But generally, those those shows that I used to schedule at 12 o'clock won't be like that as of kind of today. Because what I do is when I've done a periscope, I will upload that as another show. Now, sometimes I do two or three of those in a day. So there will be more YouTube stuff. OK, but in but that that is instead of having a show that comes out at midnight. Now, I don't know various people have a look at the site and they log on at whatever time they log on. I bet you're probably someone who logs on at roughly the same time each day. So, oh, Chris have done his show last night. Well, next time you do it, there might be two or three. And they might be longer. All right. So that's just a, a little change that I'm doing there, which I kind of take it, it and it takes the stress out of it as well, I think. 
You know, because you do your live show and and, and, and th then that's it, it's done. There's nothing to put together, it's done. You just add the little bit at the, at the end, you know, the little logo that comes up at the end and I can upload it straight away and it's done and it's there. So instead of having a scheduled show at X time, there will be one, maybe two, two little ones a day that you can watch and comment on. Apart from that, everything else is the same. So we're going to use the Periscope for the YouTube. Everything will end up on the YouTube channel from now, okay? There won't be Periscope videos and YouTube videos. Everything will end up on the YouTube. Now, with the Periscope thing, you only see any shows that were made in the last 24 hours. Then they disappear. I cannot upload any recorded shows to Periscope. But everything... Periscope and YouTube will end up on YouTube. Does that make sense? Or is that really complicated? <laughs> I'm not trying to make it really complicated here. I don't know. All right. So that's what we're going to do as of today. And of course, the long shows like what we're doing, like we are doing now, um, will indeed end up on YouTube as well. Uh, Mike says, Chris, can you do me a favour? I love looking at your ball. Pardon? Oh, the mirror ball. The mirror ball, that is. But you have some missing squares. Five in total. How can you even notice that? God's sake, I'm going to have to get another one now. Do you know, I thought... I can't believe that you people sit there and tear my programme apart. How can you actually notice that there are some squares missing on that mirror ball? God's sake, where are they? Wait for it to come round. You, you're, you're absolutely right. And he says five in total and one hanging off. My OCD is annoying. That's what happens when you're watching you notice it. So here we go. <laughs> How can you even notice that? Look, look. Right. One, two, three, four, five. You're absolutely right. And yes, there's one hanging off there. There's a little one hanging off there. You, you are absolutely right. I'm going to have to get a new one, aren't I? Or I could take some up the top, what you can't, that you can't see. I could and glue them on. I'm going to have to do that now. I can't believe someone noticed that, that there's squares missing off the mirror ball. Do me a favour, Mike, please. Uh, I should be grateful. At least you don't mention the bald spot on my head. You know, you haven't mentioned that. You know, several pieces of hair are missing, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to bed? Let me see. Is that my nephew? Gary's going to bed. Good night, Gary. Lots of love to Olivia. Olivia's their new little girl. Beautiful little girl she is, Olivia. And they've got uh, uh, another daughter called Evie. And a little boy called Harry, whose birthday it is tomorrow, isn't it? Hang on a minute. You still there, Gary? You still there? Gary, please don't go yet. I've... Right, hang on a minute. Because it's now Harry's birthday because it's 12.15. No doubt I'll get a letter tomorrow. I'll get a text tomorrow from Stacey telling me that no get no present has arrived in a post. That's because I haven't sent one yet. But do not worry, it's coming. So today is my great nephew Harry's birthday. And he today is two years old. We must sing. Sing along. Harry's his name. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, little Harry. Happy birthday to you. There we are. I'll upload that onto your page tomorrow. And if, if I tell you what, Gary, if you go forward about an hour and 40, 44 minutes, that's where that will be. Uh, no, an hour and... No, an hour and 14 minutes. Start it off from there tomorrow for Harry, and that's where that'll be, OK, roughly, because we're about an hour and 14 minutes into the show. Happy birthday, Harry. Uncle Chris loves you and would like to come and see you. I've got to tell you, Harry is, is the spitting image of my nephew, the little face. He's quite a happy child. And what amazes me is how quickly people grow up. You know, he's walking, walking at the moment. Fantastic. Bye-bye, Gary. Good night, my friend. Uh, my, my, my nephew, rather. Can't call you my friend, can I? Anyway, back to Mike, um, who says, who's, who's, who's annoyed at my little mirror bits 
disappear. Just a minute, I'll tell you what. Maybe I can find a little bit at the top there. One second. Oh. So we've got a bit hanging off there, haven't we? Can I push that on? Push that there. Oh, I have got a couple of bits here. Hang on a minute. I've got... <laughs> this might go bad. What might go bad? There's a couple of bits here. Can I stick those on somehow? Hang on a minute. Oh, no, they're di they were different size, Mike. They're a different size to those ones, my friend. Hang on a minute. Can we stick those on there? Is that going to work? No, it doesn't work. Oh, Christ. How can you even tell me this? No. Oh, there's more coming off now. Oh, hang on. That's no, not very good, is it? There's a bit hanging there. One minute. There's a bit there. Is that any better, Mike? <laughs> God's sake, how can you even notice that, honestly? Oh, hang on, I can't turn the air conditioning off now. There it goes off. I'm getting a bit chilly in it, to be honest. All right, well, I've done the best I can, okay? Sorry about that, I've done the best I can, Mike. Uh, Mike says, with my job attention to detail is essential. Thanks for the hunks in the bar anyway. <laughs> well, with the hunks in the bar. <laughs> I'm gonna, do you know, you know I'm going to have to order a new mirror ball now because of you, don't you? I won't be happy until a new one arrives. Order mirror ball. Shall we give away the old one? Who would like to win a mirror ball? Do you want me to run a competition when, uh, when, we've, when we've bought the other one? I can do that. And I will, I will install this, Mike. On the, when the mirror ball arrives, I will install it on the next live show, OK? Uh, Mike says, on the subject of holidays, um, I went to Sharm El Sheikh, is it? Sheikh in Egypt last October. I met two old ladies, 65 and 72. I never, ever had so much fun ever. Better than Gran Canaria and uh, no funny business unless riding a camel. <laughs> uh, Egypt, I don't know, Egypt has never appealed to me. Uh, my nephew, Gary, and his wife uh, have been there. And also my niece and her husband have been there. Um, but no, I, I don't know, G Egypt has never really appealed to me. I think I might like to go and visit the pyramids, but that's about it. I don't, I don't think I'd, I'd enjoy Egypt. All that sand everywhere. Oh, no, I, I mean, it must get everywhere, that sand. I can't be doing with sand. Oh, no. People that go on beaches, they love being on beaches, don't they? They absolutely love being on beaches and all that sand gets in your toes. Oh, I hate it. And then, if you're really lucky, you know, on some of those beaches, they will have a large tap somewhere. <laughs> and you go to this tap and you put your foot under it and you wash the sand off and you put it on the floor and you've got the sand on it again. What's all that about? I hate sand. Oh, I can't bear it. People say, oh, it must be lovely to walk along a nice sandy beach. No, it is not. Sand everywhere. I hate it. I hate sand. But I love the seaside. Love the seaside. I haven't been for ages. I know you keep telling me to go down there, Mike, don't you? And um, Mike wants the mirror ball. Look at you. You're all desperate for the mirror ball, aren't you? Marge wants the mirror ball. Everyone wants the mirror ball. Well, well, you'll have to wait for the competition then. <laughs> you'll have to wait for the competition. Because I can't fix that one. The little mirrors are different sizes. I mean, I could sit here and pick bits off it all day long. No, I'll just order another one and be done with it. Mirror balls are actually not that expensive. About £30 you can get one for. Um, that size. You can get smaller ones, much cheaper. Mirror balls are not expensive items. A lot of people think they're hundreds of pounds and they're not at all. Mirror balls are uh, uh, particularly cheap. Now, what was the other thing you were saying? Yeah, so Grand, uh, Grand Canary, I've been there a few... Uh, about, I think about, about four times altogether. I've kind of done that now. I had lots of fun there, Mike. Lots of wonderful, wonderful places. Uh, I didn't really go in the bars to drink at all, just in the other rooms there. And I had a wonderful, wonderful time. Uh, met um, <laughs> met several people in, these, in, the, in, in, in the rooms there. 
Oh, just wonderful, wonderful times. Really was. Yes. Uh, riding camels. I don't, don't think I'd like to ride a camel. Don't they spit at you, camels? Awful things. Disgusting. Disgusting. Uh, Brandon says, uh, that picture was not his bed. It was a lodge he went to in Derbyshire. I've read that already, haven't I? Oh, I can't remember now. I'm getting, getting very confused here. Uh, Brandon also says, uh, foreign holidays he's been to. Spain? Oh, I've been to Spain. Yeah, I've been to Spain. Uh, that was my honeymoon, actually, in 1983. That's the only time I've been to Spain. Oh, and I've been to Ibiza as well. Is that classed as Spain, Ibiza? Or not? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, but we went to Benidorm in 1983. That was OK. Did a few trips. Um, I'm just trying to think. It's so long ago now. I went to this. We went to see, I think, wine being made. And you could go and taste all these different wines. I think we were drunk by the end of it. <laughs> but we used to go um, there. You'd go out to a bar in the morning to have what they called an English breakfast. And it never really was. You know, it was like fried frankfurters. Well, that's not an English breakfast, is it? And like the bacon was just awful. Not that I, that I was eating meat at the time. I'm vegetarian now, so I don't eat bacon now or anything like that. But um, it was it was nothing like an English breakfast. I don't know if it's improved now, but they used to fry frankfurters and say they were sausages. Well, they weren't. They were frankfurters. Completely different. Have you ever seen how a frankfurter's made? Oh, my God. You'd never eat another one. if you. Oh, it's just like this pink paste that they mix together. It's awful. Awful. Really awful. Don't, don't be eating frankfurters because what's in them is really not nice at all. Brandon's also been to Egypt. OK. Uh, Morocco. No, I haven't been to Morocco. Again, I don't think um, that's somewhere I'd want to go. Morocco. Um, Derbyshire has been to in a lodge and they're the pictures that he sent very nice and have a picture Isle of Wight Isle of Wight is nice plenty to do there um, you've got the Alum Bay haven't you with all those beautiful different coloured sands I remember when I was uh, how old was I I think it was well quite young and uh, you're not allowed to collect the sand from Alum Bay because it's all different colours anyway we did and I, I must be going back here about 40 years now and I had this bucket of sand and I was ever so careful with it because you didn't want to mix the colours together. And I had this little bucket of sand, all different layers. And I got back and got in the car. Of course, at the time I got home, it had all mixed together, this sand. Complete waste of time nicking it. <laughs> That's about, God, that must be about 45 years ago I did that. And then you can buy the sand in, in, in test tubes, can't you? All different colours of sand. It's not expensive, so Isle of Wight is very nice. And what's the other place on the Isle of Wight where they've got the dinosaurs and all that? I can't remember what that's called. Let me see if I can find that for you. Um, what we're going to try? Dinosaurs Isle of Wight? <laughs> I think, and I'll find out what it's called. I didn't, I've got the name. I've got the name in my head and just... Isle of Wight, dinosaur... Uh, dinosaur attractions. Yeah, it's got to be got to be here somewhere. I love white um, dinosaur. Oh, it doesn't say. Shania, are you still with us? Have you got the? Ah, oh, thank you, Shania. Black Gang Chine. That's it. Black Gang Chine. There's a, there's a highly recommended place for you to visit on the Isle of Wight. And it's got all these models of dinosaurs and all that all over the place. It's a lovely place. Really, really nice. Black Gang Chine. That's the one, Shania. Thank you. Is it not called that anymore? Is it not called Black Gang Chine anymore? Have they changed the name of it? Because I'm finding here Dinosaur Island. Have they changed the name of that, I wonder? Because it's such a lot. Oh, hang on. Uh, here we are. Try the all new dinosaur experience at Black Gang Chine, the first of its kind in the UK, with your chance to get up close and personal with two baby ty Tyrannosaurus Rex flanked by their trained handlers. <laughs> I love that. What's that? What's that film with the dinosaurs? There's a new one coming out soon, isn't there? If it's not out already. Um, 
Dinosaur film, someone. Dinosaur film, someone. Yeah, it's still the same. I found that now, shall I? Thank you. Dinosaur film. Uh, dinosaur film, someone. Quickly. Let's just do a couple of messages here as well. Uh, Tom Harris says, Hello, Chris from Chicago. You should keep the bald spot on the mirror ball to match your bald spot. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, Tom, I like that. Tom Harris. Hello, Tom Harris in Chicago, Chicago. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I could remove a bit of it so that could represent my bald head. <laughs> just an idea. Hello to Chris. Hello, Chris. Jurassic Park, thank you very much. Jurassic Park, SCTV says it's Jurassic Park. Thank you. Yeah, I remember it now. Jurassic Park. So I think there's been two of those so far, and there's a new one coming out, isn't there? Jurassic, um... Jurassic... Jurassic Park. Come on, what's the new film called? Jurassic Park. New film... Jurassic Adventures, is it? Jurassic World, that's it. Jurassic World is a new one coming out. I should be going to see that. Thank you, Chris. Jurassic World, yeah, that's the one. I, I did quite enjoy the other ones. And it uh, had a, a very, very famous actor, wasn't it? Um, uh, oh, I'm, I'm losing words now. Perhaps I've been on for too long. Do you want me to go? <laughs> I'm, losing, I'm losing words now. I really am. Uh, Marge says Jurassic Park, that's the one. Yeah, they're making the new one. Marge wants the mirror ball. And Marge says, uh, Meerkat is like Periscope and works on iPhone and Android. Periscope is coming soon to Android. Yeah, we know that. I know Meerkat is already there. Yeah, the trouble is, I mean, I did think about Meerkat as well, but you, the trouble, you can have so many apps doing the same blooming thing. You've got to decide which one you want to go, I think, really. Uh... Gold Bloom. No, that's not the name of the actor. Um, a little little man with a beard and a moustache. What what's the name of that actor? Can't remember him. I think he died recently or in the last couple of years. Nice bloke though. Anyone remember who he is? Hmm. Hello to Carmel. Carmel's with us uh, tonight as well. Long time no see. Don't worry, Carmel. I'm still here, firing on all cylinders. Not burl lives. Not burl lives. <laughs> Back to Brandon's email on the places that uh, he's been on holiday to. Uh, also to Somerset. Oh, Somerset's lovely. But they talk all funny, dear. They talk all funny, don't they, man? <laughs> That's probably not very good. You know, I'm, I'm completely useless at accents. Absolutely useless at accents, Brandon. So here we are, some more holidays there. Anyone else want to talk about their holidays? Good or bad? Let me know. There's an email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You can call in if you want to. 020-8144-3477. 020-8144-3477. Or there's a Skype in. Skype into the show. Skype username, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. Skype username, United Kingdom Talk. I better close some of these windows down because of my uh, computer to start, start having trouble keeping up with everything, I think. One minute. Right. Um, what was I talking to you about? Oh yeah, some some of the some of the other holidays I've been on. Uh, I mentioned Disney, and I I just adore Disney. I've been five times. I've been to the Paris Disney. Um, if you've been to the Florida Disney, and you go to the Paris one, you'll be disappointed. Okay, don't do it. Really, not a good idea, because. The Florida Disney is is the big one. I mean, it's enormous, absolutely enormous. A day is not long enough for you to go around one of one of one of the parks. It is just fantastic. And my advice: take someone younger with you. If you if you're of an age, you know, sort of above thirty, then you want to take someone younger with you. Okay, could be a child. Um, I wouldn't recommend taking a child under the age of seven, I reckon. Because they won't appreciate what's going on around them. 
but take away with your child, you know, who's who's around seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay? And you will experience the magic of Disney through their eyes. It is just wonderful. Now, I went uh, with my with my own son, actually. That would have been 1980... We think three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Around about 1988, 1989, I think something like that, and um, and that was good. You know, he would have been only seven, around about seven then. Uh, and then last year, took my nephew was 17, and I had a much better time with someone younger than than I did on my own. It was all right going on my own to Florida. You know, it was okay. Had a car and all that. But to take someone younger, you really do experience a, a completely different thing with them. Because all the time you're thinking, right, what does he want to do? What will make him happy? And it's, it's wonderful. Disney is wonderful. So many rides to go on. And you don't have to go on these fast rides. There's plenty of family rides. And I've said so many times before, my favourite ride at Disney, and it's all very sad, is It's a Small World. La da 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 and they're all very slow. The Snow White ride is no longer, I'm afraid. Jimmy and I uh, spent, that's, that's my nephew, spent um, ages queuing up for what I thought was the Snow White ride. And it turned out to be like a meet and greet thing with Snow White. And we went through these doors and we saw little children going up... <laughs> Going up to Snow White, standing and talking to her. And he looked at me and I looked at him. I said, oh, my God, it's it's not a ride. It's a meet and greet. He said, I know. I said, well, what do we do now? He said, well, should we just go? I said, well, we can't go now. We can't just walk past, can we? And then we were called. And I just felt so stupid. <laughs> and I didn't know what to say to her. I mean, what do you say to Snow White? She said, hello, how are you? She says, oh, fantastic. Two lovely young princes to fight for me. And I said, and I said to her, I said, oh, we're not, we're not really into fighting. I mean, how stupid, what a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I just didn't know what to say to her. And there was some, some other comment that she made. I said, well, thanks very much. And I went to shake her hand. And then we're coming out. He said, I can't believe you just did that. This is my nephew. I said, what? He said, you don't touch a princess. I said, well, she's not a real princess. It doesn't matter. You do not touch a princess. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, I nearly went, when I went up to her, I said, I didn't have the art to tell her that I thought she was a ride. <laughs> oh, it was funny. And then... Um, Years ago, also, I went to Florida Disney uh, with a very good friend of mine, Steve, at the time. And we had a nice time there. And at that time, they had this, like, um, like cable car. that flew. It's not there anymore. I don't know why they took it down. Maybe it got struck by lightning a few times. I don't know. And it used to fly across the whole path. And you could just sit in there and be taken across the whole Disney thing. It was, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Chris... Chris, I can't remember where... I know you're in the States. Whereabouts are you in the States again? Are you in Atlanta? Am I right in guessing that? Anyway, Chris says I took the family on holiday to Canada. That must be beautiful, Canada. There's a place I'd like to go, Canada. Uh, one of our regular uh, viewers lives in Canada, Canada, Matt. A minute. Took the holiday, family on holiday to Canada... And got locked out of coming back to the States. How does that happen? Terror attacks on New York at the same time. And they closed the borders. Oh my word. Gosh. Fell in love with the people of Canada during that trip. They were all amazing to us. Wouldn't let us pay for anything because of the tragic events that were happening in America. Oh yes, we all remember that, uh, Chris. Terrible. Terrible times. 
Tom Harris says, RE holidays. I always try to make the best out of holidays, even if they're full of inconveniences. Uh, my trip to Scotland last year, I had horrible weather for most of it. Um, uh, but still managed to enjoy myself. This year, I'm going to Iceland. And with my luck there, there'd be a volcano eruption. Well, that thing's always grumbling, that one, would, wouldn't it? That, that's a... Uh, uh, volcano in Iceland is always rumbling away a bit. It stopped all our planes for weeks a couple of years ago. Do you remember that? God, I'm glad you have a good time. I'm glad you have a good time. It's not always about the weather, is it, Tom? Although here in the UK, we get a fair amount of rain here and we, we like to get out of it. That's why we go to other places, to get away from the rain. But generally, the summers are OK here. Now, what's disappointing really is is when you have a hot summer, but most of it's been cloudy and you haven't actually seen much sun. That's always disappointing. We had a lovely day yesterday when I went out on my trip to, to the Runnymede Hotel. Really, really nice time. Really, really nice time. Good. And um, Scotland, well, I've been to Scotland. Um, last time I went was only for a few hours because I took my nephew uh, and my sister. They'd never been on, a, on, a, on an aeroplane before. And I think he was 15 at the time, if I'm right. So it's a few years ago. And we just went up to Glasgow and back for the day, really just for the plane experience. And uh, they had a nice time on that. And he, he was really scared on the plane, but he was fine on the way back. Once, once you've done it once, you're OK, aren't you, I suppose, really? Uh, and again, Scotland, I went with the Scouts into the Highlands. And I remember us, we, we were camping kind of on a hill. And it was it was just beautiful, and it's uh, I miss that camping. And the funny thing is, now I'm a bit older, I don't know if I could fall asleep again on a hard floor. You know, even when you put that thin bit of foam underneath you, you might have been camping, Tom or anyone else. I don't know, but you can buy this roll-up foam thing, and it's it's about that thin. You put it underneath you, it just doesn't make any bloody difference. To me. <laughs> you might as well be laying on the hard floor. Yeah, I've got a two-man tent um, in the cupboard that I haven't used for, oh, my God, uh, 18, 28, 38, 40, probably about 33 years. And it's I, I unwrapped it a couple of years ago to have a look, see if it had got holes in it, but it still looks perfectly all right to me. I ought to set that up maybe in the garden one day and maybe sleep out there one night and see what it's like, you know, knowing full well that I can just pop back into the house if it gets too cold. Or is that cheating, isn't it? I bet I wouldn't be able to sleep. I love my... I, I can't even sleep in a, in, a, in a strange bed. I have trouble sleeping in a hotel bed, to be honest, Tom. Uh, thanks for that, Tom. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, Chris is in Washington. Thank you, Washington. Cows, fields, mountain and loggers. <laughs> what is that, in Washington? Yeah, so that's where he is. Um... Shania says, all I can remember now is the mirror ball falling down a couple of years ago. Yeah, that happened at Christmas, didn't it? The thing just completely fell down. And that's why the little bits of mirror are missing that Mike has noticed and clearly pointed out to me on this programme in front of everyone, dear. God. In front of anyone. Oh, Mike has already sent... Um... God's sake. Mike has already sent a link to a mirror ball. Let's have a quick look. See how much that one is. Hey, twelve ninety nine, Free delivery. Oh. So it's not free delivery because it's not over twelve ninety nine. How annoying is that? So that's a 300 millimetre one. How big is 300 millimetres though? I don't know. What, what, have I got a tape measure in here somewhere? Just a minute. I'll have to look now for a ruler. Oh, you are awkward, dear. One minute. Yeah, all over here. No. Oh, Mike, what's 300 millimetres, dear? I don't know, what What would you say that one is then? That's about... I reckon that's about... About 12 inches wide, is it? Would it be about 12? I reckon that's about 12 inches wide. Is that 300 millimetres? 12, I don't know. <sighs> What's he moaning about now? Hang on a minute. Chris, can you do me a favour? I love looking at your plant, but you have some missing leaves. Where are the missing leaves? 
There's no missing leaves. There's no, there's no missing leaves. Will you stop pointing out things with your OCD? Or I'll have you around here to do my oeuvring. And I will point out if you miss anything. What's it like in your house, Mike? Are you a bit of a, um, a busman's holiday, I reckon? Well, your hotel's beautiful, but your house is a bit of a dump. Is that about right, Mike? Mike? Uh, Mike? <laughs> Brandon says that accent I did of of uh, of Somerset is terrible, but hilarious. I'm no good. Don't ask me to do um uh, to do accents, please. Manalo, Canada. Look at it. It's like heart on it, heart light on his chest. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? My Barry Manalo calendar. Oh, no Barry Manilow news. We were hoping he was going to come to the UK, but no news as of yet, I'm afraid, boys and girls. Very disappointing, because he's on his um, final tour in uh, in the States. He's he's given up touring. I'm not surprised, you know, 72. A lot of us are disappointed that he's given it up, but, you know, you, can't, you just can't keep going forever, can you? You really can't keep going forever. Um, Craig says, on the subject of holidays... We've always been down to Weymouth, Dorset. Ah, yes, Weymouth. Now, we went to a Pontins down there, Sand Bay. I think it was Sand Bay. Oh, no, it might have been Rivera. Rivera. I think Rivera was the holiday destination, the, the Pontins holiday destination that we went to. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, anyway, Craig goes down to a caravan site, Osmington Mills. Osmington Mills. There was a, there was a, yeah, I'm still on. I'm still here. I'm still here. Don't worry. We're still here till one o'clock. Okay. Um, uh, Osmington Bay. That was a Pontins as well. Now that I think about it. Yes. I wonder if Osmington Mills was Osmington Bay. Pontins. I wonder if it was a Pontins. It's about six or seven miles outside of Weymouth. But recently Osmington has been taken over and they've taken away all the caravans and just got holiday homes. So now we don't go and have not been on holiday for the past two or three years. We visited West Bay near Bridgeport. Uh, now West Bay is used for Broadchurch, which is an ITV show. And West Bay was used for the BBC drama series Harbour Lights, starring Nick Berry from Harpy. Oh, talking of television, it's great to see uh, Inspector George Gentry back on. Anyone watch that? With Martin Shaw. Oh, he's f I love him. He's such, a, he's such a great actor, don't you think? Love that program, George Gentry, and he used to be a, uh, in a program where he was a, he was a judge. Can't think of the name of that one. Martin Shaw judge judge program. One minute, Martin Shaw judge. Let's see what that brings up. Judge John Deed. That was it. John Deed. No, John. It's Judge Deed. That's the one, Joey. Oh, that was great. I've got the DVD downstairs of one of the series. That was really good. There was actually supposed to be, I know there was supposed to be more of those, but he couldn't fit in because he was so busy with his film and he couldn't fit any more in, unfortunately, which is why the last series, well, that was a few years ago now, wasn't it? The last series was a few years ago and they didn't. I don't think they finished the whole film and the whole series there. All right. OK, boys and girls, I've got a, a couple of emails to read now. Thanks very much for all your um, little holiday bits and pieces. I do appreciate that. And a, a new Mirabal will be ordered. Uh, Mike says 11 inches. Oh, well, that would be the one then. I could possibly order that one. Let's have a look. New Mirabal. So that's 11 inches. Are you ready for this? Or do I want a bigger one? Is that about 11 I reckon that's about 11 inches there. I'm going to order that now. Buying now with one-click ordering. Here we go. Ready? One click. Thank you. Your order has been placed. And only 15 quid. I'm pleased about that. So when that arrives, we might give away the other one. Although I, I just wonder how much that's going to cost to send in the post. Is that a tax-deductible item? Postage? I think it might well be. Oh, and Mike sends in a picture of his bedroom. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look. Oh, oh, my God. What's that then? It's upside down. Why is it upside down? Well, please, people not send in upside down photographs. I'll turn it around. Just a minute. Let me have a look at that. You can't see this, can you, boys and girls? No, I don't think I, don't think I can get you to see it. Flip, rotate right. Oh, look at his. <laughs> he's got a monkey at the end of the, end of the bed. And his quilt cover 
is the London Underground map. Oh dear, Mike. I mean, <laughs> surely you can find a better quilt cover than that. <laughs> Where did you get that from? Was that a gift when he was a small child? <laughs> I love it. All white sheets and everything. So it's, it's actually very well, very, very tidy in there. Uh, my my bedroom, I, I've got a floor drobe in my bedroom. Do you know what that is, Mike? A floor drobe. No, it's like a wardrobe, but the clothes are on the floor. That's a bit like my bedroom. <laughs> Dear me. Right, let's do um, a couple of emails. First of all, I'd like to read this uh, email out that I think I missed. And it was sent in on the 18th of April. And I must apologise to David Law, who's been with the show years. I mean, he's been listening to the show now for years. And he says, I wanted to share with you something that would make your skin crawl from the cost. But it was worth it. Because uh, I think we were talking about air conditioning at some point as well as today. Uh, or, or No, asthma. I was talking about asthma. Now, my asthma has been really good for a few months now. The, the best it's been for years. I don't know why. It's just improved dramatically. And I barely ever touch that blue thing. <sniffs> barely ever, ever touch that now for some reason. And I was puffing away phew, six, seven, eight times a day for a long time. And then suddenly it improved and I don't know why. Um... I had, well, I do know why, actually. Yeah, I do know why. Number one, I stopped the cat coming into most of the house. Right, so she comes in as far as the kitchen, which is warm. She has a little bed there, but she doesn't come into the rest of the house. OK, and I was convinced it was something to do with the cat hairs. Also, I read an article on the Internet that said you should never dry your clothes inside, especially if you have any lung conditions. Well, I've been drying clothes in here for years. You know, just shoving stuff over the banister, on top of radiators, that sort of thing. I never noticed there was, like, steam in the atmosphere or anything like that. Well, I stopped doing those things. And seriously, the difference to my asthma has been unbelievable. It's made an enormous difference. And I think, actually, not so much the cat, but the fact that I was drying stuff in the house, I think that has made a huge difference to my asthma. The fact that I don't do that anymore. I dry stuff in the kitchen. I've got a little clothes horse now in the kitchen. And of course, I've got washing lines in the garden. But when it's wet, you can't hang them out there. But I might drive it, dry, I dry it in the kitchen. But there's a door between the kitchen and the rest of the house. So any moisture in the air doesn't get through. Anyway, David says, I had my ventilation ducts in my home scrubbed and vacuumed. So I don't have any ventilation ducts. Also, a micro power guard reverse ion filter system was installed. I have chronic asthma and breathing was getting difficult in the winter months. Now, this is what happened to me. Where I would close up the house and turn on the heating. Same would go for the air conditioning during the summer. The total cost was... $1,318 or 881 British pounds. I believe it's already been worthwhile, though. It's much easier to breathe upstairs, and it's good to know all of the collective unknown from 16 years since the house was built is now gone. It was never cleaned before I moved in July 2013. So, you know, I mean, you see, if you've got asthma or something like that, I, be, I do believe you need to do something to stop it happening, not to sort the problem once it's happening. It's all very well having these fantastic um, puff things, you know, and, and your breathing's all right for a while again. It's all very well doing that, but you're not, treat, you're not curing the problem, are you? You're treating the problem. You're not curing it. So you've got to do things to try and cure it. And I've, what I've done, stop the cat coming in, stop drying stuff in the house. It's made an enormous difference, an enormous difference to me. It really has. So that's very interesting. And thank you for that, David. I'm so sorry I did. Uh, I missed that out a couple of weeks ago, didn't I, when you first sent that in. And uh, Chris, uh, who's been chatting to us today, SCTV, sent this in on the subject of the YouTube questions. Because I've told you what we're doing to the YouTube videos. I did ask this week on one of the short videos uh, what you thought about bringing the Periscope and the YouTube stuff all together. And uh, everyone said that was fine to do that. And, you know, 
not not to worry about it. And Chris sent this in. In response to today's YouTube question, yes, it's totally acceptable to use vertical periscope video in a YouTube horizontal video, especially because uh, I would have a greater chance of you saying my name, American Chris, a.k.a. SCTV fan in Washington, in a Periscope video, which then might be played back on one of your world-famous YouTube videos. <laughs> so without hesitation, I say it's acceptable. But it might be world-famous, just not with many people, Chris. <laughs> The secret is to take the mick out yourself all the time. That's true. <laughs> Brandon says, me and Mark will get on nicely. You're so insulting tonight. Who's insulting anyone? I wouldn't dare insult anyone. Me? Me insult anyone? That's the last thing I'll ever do. Unless you're on a reality show. On a related show. I see those the retards are back again on Big Brother, aren't they? Christ, that program is back. I is it a year since that was on? I can't believe a whole year has passed since since that rubbish has been on the television again. Unbelievable! A year has passed since Big Brother came on. Have you seen them? No, neither have I. Don't worry. The people that are, are involved in this particular show are very intelligent. This one that we're doing now and are unlikely to know anything or anyone who's ever been on Big Brother. Retards is the word for those people. Retards. They are. They really are. Uh, Marge, who we were talking to earlier on the uh, phone today, sent in this. Have you ever seen a movie called Village of the Damned? Yes, awful. Oh it's, oh, it's a scary movie. She says it has some British accent children, aliens with glowing eyes made in 1960. It scared the crap out of me as a kid. I'm watching it again for nostalgia's sake and, it, <laughs> sake, and it still freaks me out a bit. As she sent in a little picture of the, the very scary children on that. Um, what's it called again? Village of the Damned. Horrible. Horrible. Can you see that one there? There we are. I'll hold that to you there as well. Village of the Damned. I think they, they, all those, I think the old horror, fi horror films are always the best ones, don't you think? Eh? Hey? Um, Marge also sent this in because she was uh, mentioned Morning Glories the other day and I told her in the UK, Morning Glories means something very different than it means in America. In America, it means a, a certain type of flowers. And Marge says, I'm very glad I gave you a laugh about Morning Glories. I have to look it up as to what it means in the UK. Uh, they are a climbing plant and come in many varieties of colours besides blue. I bought multicolours and they are a very hardy plant that will come up year in a year after without replanting. I got them to cover the overhang above my sitting place in the backyard. And she sent this picture in, which I've only printed out in black and white, I'm afraid. But you get the general idea, so that will be multicolored of little flowers there. Very, very pretty indeed. Thank you, Marge. Um, Brandon says, they out BB on early. Try that again, Brandon. Check your spelling first, please, dear. Can't work out what you're trying to say there. It's like another language, dear. <laughs> um... And, oh yes, I'm just doing this now. And finally, we're going to finish off with this um, email, again from Marge, that she sent in a couple of days ago, commenting on the Tuesday video. And she says, Howdy Chris, I want to comment about the Periscope you added to the end of Tuesday's video. I think it's just fine. I laughed, actually, that I had my Twitter settings to notify me via my own phone, when you have stream, then I log on to the PC to watch it from the website since Android still does not have Periscope yet. Periscope not available for Android yet, only on iPhone. And my username is Chris Reardon UK. All right? My Periscope username is Chris Reardon UK. Uh, it woke me up at 4.30 a.m. when you started doing the show. Well, you know, that's the time difference, Marge. <laughs> It's okay, however. I like the morning look with the rugged beard. You look like Indiana Jones. Are oh, you having a laugh, aren't you? I don't want any rocks flying down the road at me, thank you very much. The portrait angle is okay as far as I am uh, concerned and actually makes me focus more on what I'm watching. 
It reminds me of like opening the door just a bit and peeking out, yeah, peeking around the side, peeking around the side, Marge. Your gardens look, the garden's looking fantastic, yeah, because we did a little um, show in the garden, didn't we, this morning, of me making hanging baskets and things. And congratulations on the weight loss. I lost uh, ten pounds myself, and then gained five. Yeah, but that's okay, Marge, because you've still lost five, darling. You know. You still lost five. That happens to me. Okay? So last year, I lost a stone and put back six pounds. Now I'm back down five pounds again. I'm now just over 12 stone. I don't know what that is in pounds. It's about 75 kilos. The only thing is I've worked out, because I, I was going to start doing it in kilos, but kilos, I think there's four pounds to a kilo. So you can lose eight pounds. What is it? No, it's about, I think it's about two and a half pounds to a kilo. So you can lose five pounds, but when you look at the clock, it's only two kilos. So I've gone back to doing that in pounds now because it looks better. <laughs> um, I lost 10 pounds myself, then gained back five. I fell into a bit of depression again over my mum's passing. Yes, of course you would. But grabbed myself by the bootstraps and now I'm back going again. Eating veggies and salads to knock the weight off again seems to be doing the trick. Yeah, veggies and salads and fruit. Fruit's good as well. I think I'm going to be like you uh, are on growing vegetables. However, it is hard work. The red potatoes are looking good. Not sure they will make it through since this is my first time planting them. Yeah, the thing is with the vegetables, I think it's wonderful to grow your own vegetables. And I did this for a couple of years. Um, I've stopped doing it now simply because you, you, you kind of have to have a lot of space to grow a lot of vegetables. It's all very well putting in a a couple of potatoes here and there, and you might get a few potatoes, but not a whole year's worth. Do you see what I mean? You've still got to go to that supermarket and buy potatoes because you'll run out, and carrots, and peas, and runner beans. Yeah, you can freeze certain things, yes, indeed. But the problem I had there is I don't get the sun all day in my garden, only for about half the day. So the vegetables... They, they did. I did all right, but nothing special, you know. It was, I would say, marginally successful there. Um, Marge says, we've had floods here in Oklahoma this week. For the past seven years, we've had really bad drought. But this week, at times, it's rained nine inches in an hour. Nine inches! God's sake, woman. That's a lot. It's like Mother... Mother what? Gia. Gia. Can't find a happy middle. Either too much or not enough. But our lakes and water levels are almost normal and everything is bright green. Oh, it's isn't it lovely once the rains come down and you've had a bit of a parched spell? Everything immediately shoots green again. That's why you should never bother watering your lawn. I mean, for years and years I had that tap on watering that lawn and it's completely and totally unnecessarily. If you have a drought period, yes, indeed, the lawn will go brown. But all you need is a little bit of rain and up it comes again all green. Waste of time watering lawn, it really is. When Periscope comes to Android, I can give you and anyone viewing a tour of my own Oklahoma homestead. I have a fairy, a fairy guarding my front door, but I think your Dalek may do better, yeah, because I've got a Dalek in the garden, which you would have seen on the short videos. You have a great idea planting in planters. That's the way I'm going to start going now. Can a person ship seeds to another country, do you know? I can send you some morning glories. They take no effort to grow. I don't know. Some countries are very, very funny about you sending seeds and things through the post. Um, I don't know if that's legal or not. Do you want me to have a quick look? Anyone know the answer to that? Let me just put my books down here. Um, what will we type into this? Sending seeds. I'd love to try some, actually. Hang on. Hang on. Morning Glory Seeds. Let me try it on Amazon. Morning Glory Seeds. Let's see if we've got them here. Oh, we do. Morning Glory. Blue. All different cut. Oh, look at those. We, now, we've got them here, Marge. Morning Glory, Heavenly Blue, 150 seeds, 99 pence. No, don't send them, darling. 
that'd be fun. I can order them myself. I might try that. I wonder if it's too early, too late to do these now. What are we in May? I don't know. Uh, beautiful throughout the summer. Yeah. I don't know. Seeds are poisonous. Well, I think most things are, aren't they? I don't know. I might order some because we're only 99p. Shall I order some and be done with it? Yeah, that's just 99p, one click. Go on then. Let's order some of those. They're the blue ones. I saw some other coloured ones there as well. See, that, that, that Amazon one-click ordering is deadly, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Oh, we're nearly out of time here. Nearly out of time. There's some... The blue ones there, pink ones. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, it's all different ones, aren't they? Oh, there's different colour ones. Oh, £6.30. I'm not paying that, dear. God's sake. £2.50, those ones. Uh, I'll, I'll just order one packet of those. And um, I'll let you know how they go, Marge, OK? Um, that's enough for now. Thanks for the advice on the jasmine. I'm going to find those as well to plant. Jasmine, beautiful smell, Marge. You've got to put them close to a door and let the, the wind blow the smell in. It's just such a nice smell. Anyway, uh, just a few more messages coming up here. Uh, Gaia means earth, apparently. Thank you. I did wonder what that meant, Marge. Uh, Shania says, I'm happy with the Periscope videos. Good. Glad you are, Shania. She's been to Bath, Bristol, Cardiff, Oxford with a school, all over the place. And the Dorset Steam Fair, where we go every summer. Oh, that's lovely. I do like a steam fair. Do you get on the steam trains? That'd be nice. Uh, and Brandon says, I thought morning glories meant a flower in this country. Uh, no, look it up, Brandon. Look it up, dear. They put Big Brother on early. Made a mistake, did they? We'll get to take it off again. We don't want to see it. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very, very much for joining the show. OK, uh, once again, my email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is the email address. Thank you very much, Joey. I'm glad you enjoyed the show today. There'll be another live show on Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. All right, Saturday afternoon, 12 o'clock UK time. And keep up to date with the short videos as well. You can find them either by subscribing on YouTube youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, you, is that AD? Have you been with us tonight as well, AD? How long were you with us then? You were very quiet there, sitting there. Uh, youtube.com forward slash uh, Chris Reardon UK is my YouTube. Or go to my main United Kingdom Talk website. you find that at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and generally there you see three little video boxes they are my latest videos and they tell you which is which and what have you. And also all the live events that I do as well. Pretty busy there. Oh, you turned back on at 22, did you? Oh, well. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll see you soon, boys and girls. Bye-bye now. Have a nice day.